Hello, everyone. Welcome to the webinar Doing Business in Colombia, Canada Colombia Free Trade Agreement and Opportunities for BC Companies. Those who have joined our previous webinars on South America uh, might recognize me for those new to the session. My name is Ganna Drost. I manage a trade policy and negotiations branch, BC Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation. And uh, before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from the territories of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Esquimalt and Sandese First Nations, the traditional land keepers of the land where I live, work and play. And I'm joined today by our panelists connecting from Bogota, Claudia Ramirez, Senior Trade Commissioner with Embassy of Canada in Colombia, Juliana Perez, Regional Coordinator, Expert Development Canada. And we also have Juliana's colleague online, Raul Duke, a senior manager, senior account manager uh, for EDC, and he's connecting from BC. So today's webinar, uh, Doing Business in Colombia, concludes a series of webinars on Canada's free trade agreements in South America and market opportunities in South American markets. We've previously delivered two webinars on Chile and on Peru, and uh, we're happy to, to share the links to the webinar recordings with those of you who are not able to attend. So now I'd like to introduce our agenda for today's webinar on Colombia. The webinar will last approximately one hour and 15 or 20 minutes, and there will be three presentations in total. So we will start with an introduction to Canada's bilateral uh, free trade agreement with Colombia, and we'll proceed with a presentation on export opportunities and key sectors in the Colombian markets. So the presentation on export opportunities will be delivered by Claudio Ramirez, and uh, both presentations on canada Colombia free trade agreement and export opportunities will last approximately 15 to 20 minutes each. And then we will move to the presentation on uh, support to BC and Canadian exporters in Colombia available through Canada's export credit agency. So that presentation will be delivered by Juliana Perez and uh, we will conclude today's webinar with a Q&A session. And we've reserved approximately 20 to 25 minutes for, for that. And for Q&A, please use the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen uh, to raise questions. And you can do that at any time during the, the webinar. And please try to be as specific as, as you can and indicate if possible who you are directing your question to. And finally, if the questions are some technical questions that might need some follow-up, we might take them offline too. And also wanted to mention that the session is being recorded and uh, we'll be sharing the recording and the presentations uh, after, after the webinar in the post, uh, post event email. And if you experience any technical issues, any uh, problems with audio or anything like that, uh, please send me a message in the, in the chat using the chat function. So now let's move to the presentation on canada Colombia free trade agreement. And for those who were not able to join our previous webinars, just a few words about uh, my branch. So the branch uh, trade policy and negotiations branch represents BC interests in uh, both international and domestic free trade agreements. Um, and uh, in trade uh, agreements, in trade negotiations, as well as in trade disputes that affect BC. And uh, we also run consultations with BC businesses and stakeholders to better understand your interests and com to communicate them to the federal government who leads the international trade negotiations. And of course, our branch also does FTA outreach sessions like this webinar to ensure that the information on free trade agreements is widely known and, uh, and understood. So here is a quick overview of my presentation. Uh, I'll briefly present uh, the role of our ministry. Then I'll talk about Canada's trade agreements and uh, canada Colombia agreement. And I will mention some key opportunities for goods and services in that market. And we'll also dive into some practical steps on how to use free trade agreements. So the Ministry of Jobs, Economic Recovery and Innovation aims to make life more affordable for British Columbians by building a strong and sustainable economy and steering an economic recovery where no one is, is left behind. 
and it is ministry's mandate to assist businesses with the leveraging trade opportunities in existing and in new markets and to encourage trade diversification to fight protectionism abroad and to enhance market access for VC exports. We also support communities in all regions to attract investment to create resiliency and we assist underrepresented expert groups including women, indigenous, youth-owned businesses, SMEs located generally throughout BC. And we assist you to be aware uh, and leverage opportunities through a variety of programs like Expert Navigator that provides free support and ongoing guidance to help your business grow outside BC. And we also have BC Trade and Investment Offices, uh, also known as BC in-market representatives that are based in a number of markets globally. And uh, in terms of the economic recovery and growth, of course, there are many ways to foster that. And one way is to encourage businesses like you to leverage the opportunities that are found in free trade agreements and to help you diversify your export markets. So today I will introduce some general opportunities under Canada-Columbia free trade agreement, and hopefully they will allow you to, to start a discussion, to start thinking in that direction on how that might be one uh, piece of the puzzle for, for your products and services to thrive internationally and in the Colombian market specifically. So I know some of you might already uh, have seen this map before in our previous webinars, but I just wanted to, to add some broader context before I dive into Canada Colombia FTA. So Canada has a first mover advantage and to this day has secured 14 free trade agreements. Uh, that cover 49 countries, along with two domestic trade agreements. So those agreements give businesses like you uh, access to nearly 90% of export markets or about 1.5 billion potential consumers worldwide. And this map shows you where in the world Canada currently has free trade agreements. And the countries that have implemented free trade agreements with Canada are marked in light blue. And some of the, of the well-known trade agreements are USMA, Canada Agreement with the US and Mexico, uh, the CPTPP, Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, and in green are the markets where Canada are, is in negotiation and exploratory talks. In dark blue on this map, you can see the countries where Canada has concluded but not yet ratified free trade agreements. And uh, it is also useful to note that some free trade agreements overlap. For example, Mexico is uh, in FTA with Canada through PUSMA and also through the CPTPP. And the good news for you is that you can choose under which FTA you want to claim the preferential terms of trade. So this is not the case of Colombia yet. Canada and Colombia uh, have a bilateral free trade agreement that is in force. But a few years ago, discussions have started between Canada and Pacific Alliance, to which Colombia is, is party to. So potentially at some point in the future, you'll need to decide between two FTAs, between Colombia uh, and, and Canada bilateral FTA and uh, Canada Pacific Alliance FTA, when it gets concluded under which FTA you want to claim the preferential terms of trade. So now, Let's take a look at the canada Colombia free trade agreement in more details and let's just start with some uh, quick facts. Uh, so uh, canada Colombia FTA entered into force uh, in August 2011 uh, and it became Canada's sixth FTA in South America. So the FTA between Canada and Colombia is a comprehensive one. And in addition to covering reduction and elimination of tariffs, it covers trade in services, government procurement, investment, temporary entry for business persons, digital trade, financial services, and, and so on. BC ranks number six among Canadian provinces exporting to Colombia and number five in terms of imports from the market. So there is a significant trade deficit in imports from Colombia to, to BC. And uh, it, it exceeds the imports from Colombia, exceeds uh, the exports almost by five times. So nevertheless, it's an opportunity worth considering and hopefully today's webinar will contribute to helping reverse the, the trend and identify the, the opportunities that might be suitable for you. 
So the QBC exports to Colombia include cereals, ventilating hoods, instruments for measuring electrical phenomena, wheat, uh, heat pumps and refrigeration equipment, and some pork meat. So key imports from Colombia are non-roasted coffee. It represents more than half of, of Colombia's exports to BC. Cut flowers, tropical fruit, food preparations, and uh, cane sugar. So now uh, let's take a look at some opportunities for Canadian and BC goods that are offered uh, by uh, Canada Columbia FTA. And uh, as you might recall from our previous sessions, one of the most tangible and visible aspects of free trade agreements are tariff reductions and tariff eliminations. So before moving to tariff reductions, it is useful to know that Colombia's most favored nation's tariff tariff that applies to countries that Colombia has no free trade agreement with uh, is around 5.8%. And more specifically, it is 14.3% for agricultural goods and 4.7% for non-agricultural goods. But the good news for you is that Canada Columbia FTA provides considerable advantages to your products, to products made in Canada, as it has eliminated or phased out a number of Colombian tariffs. So as such, 98% of Canadian exports to Colombia became duty-free when the FTA entered into force. So immediately upon the implementation of Canada Columbia FTA, Colombia eliminated tariffs on most industrial products, including paper, machinery, equipment, certain chemicals, as well as textiles and uh, clothes. Colombia also eliminated tariffs on the majority of agricultural exports from Canada including wheat, barley, peas, lentils, and products such as beef and beans also benefit from immediate duty-free access within uh, specified limits. So within volumes that are known as quotas. So a number of other key exports such as pork, canola oil, and other oil seeds, animal fats, frozen French fries, whiskey will also uh, see their tariffs gradually eliminated over time. So on this slide, you can uh, see only some examples of tariff reductions and tariff eliminations, and also the most favored, uh, favored nation tariff that is currently enforced by Colombia for countries that have no FTAs with Colombia. So these are mostly the examples from agri-food sector, but I'll be happy to check, uh, to help you check any tariffs for, for your particular product if that is of interest. So very important point here is that if you wish to take advantage of the preferential tariff treatment under canada Colombia agreement or any other free trade agreement, you will need to claim it. So Colombian customs authorities will not assume that your product qualifies for 0% tariff just because it was shipped by a Canadian company from Canada. And I'll come back to that in a, in a few slides. So in today's new age, FTAs benefits for trade, they go beyond the effect of lower or eliminated tariffs. And FTAs, they also provide greater certainty and reduce perceived business risk while making uh, doing business internationally more transparent and predictable. So when entered into force back in 2011, Canada Columbia FTA was instrumental and continues to provide can uh, Canadian exporters with a level playing field with other competitors in the Colombian market. So Colombia already had uh, an FTA with Chile and Mexico prior to 2011, but later on it also signed agreements with the US, with the European Union, with Sin Singapore, South Korea, Pacific Alliance, and uh, a number of other countries. So back, back then, back in 2011, uh, Canada had a very distinctive advantage uh, in, uh, with the Canada Columbia FTA. So Canada Columbia FTA also provides access to government procurement for BC companies in Colombia. So the FTA guarantees uh, BC suppliers the right to bid on a broad range of goods, services, and uh, construction contracts carried out by Colombia's federal government entities. It also ensures that practices remain transparent and fair for suppliers. And under the bilateral trade agreement, Canada and Colombia agreed to a negative list approach, which means that the agreement covers procurement of all goods and services unless specified otherwise. 
And in the table on this slide, you can see the approximate value of thresholds under uh, Canada uh, Columbia Free Trade Agreement. These thresholds give you an idea about the value of procurement contract has to equal or to exceed so as to be covered by the trade agreement. And the caveat here is that the thresholds that you can see on this slide, they are rounded and they are also in the US dollars for, for your convenience, but the contracts when, uh, that you will see on the Colombian procurement platform uh, will be in a Colombian currency. And I'm sure that Claudio and his team will be able to, to assist you with that. So um, now uh, let's take a look at a few, few steps on how FTAs work and how to claim the preferential treatment. Uh, we often hear from, from businesses whether FTA benefits are automatic if a company exports goods to a country where Canada has an, a free trade agreement with. So a short answer to this question is no. Uh, the preferential tariff, the benefits, they need to be claimed. And I'll just provide a glimpse into a few steps uh, for you to keep in mind when you do business in countries covered by Canada's FTAs and want to claim this preferential treatment, the uh, reduced or eliminated tariffs, for example. So first, you'd want to check uh, tariff preference in a select market. And uh, you can do it through Canada's Tariff Finder website using a harmonized systems code or a keyword for uh, your product. So this user-friendly tool helps you to see how your goods will be treated in Canada's FTA's markets tariff wise. And next step uh, is the rules of origin compliance. So the rules of origin are the rules around the amount of domestic content in a good. And rules of origin can be complicated and uh, they are product specific. And rules of origin also are specific to, uh, to trade agreements. So if you are in doubt, we can help and take a look and at your product and uh, see in more details how they, how they apply in your case. So once you are done with the first two steps, you need to fill in a certificate of origin. And the information needed for these certificates can vary by, by agreement. And under Columbia, uh, under Canada Columbia FTA, for example, there is a set format for, for this certificate of origin. Well, some other agreements like the CPTPP or CUSMA uh, have no specific format and only a set of mandatory elements. And finally, if you want to be sure uh, how another country's customs administration will treat your products upon arrival, you can request an advanced ruling on tariff or origin information. And advanced rulings, they are one of the most effective trade facilitation tools in Canada's FTAs. And, uh, they help expedite uh, customs clearance and provide more certainty about how a customs administration will treat your product at the border before you even ship it. So I'll wrap my presentation here and I uh, hope it was not too long or too technical. And uh, I'll close by saying that we continue to support people and businesses in the recovery from the pandemic by assisting you with leveraging opportunities in Canada's free trade agreements. And if this is something that you consider, be it in uh, South America, Asia, Europe, or other markets, please get in touch with, uh, with us and I'll make sure that you get the information and the, the assistance that you need. So now without further ado, I'd like to hand it over to, to Claudio Ramirez for his portion on pres of presentation on Colombia market and expert opportunities available to BC and Canadian companies. So over to you, Claudio. You can share your screen now. Yes, thank you very much, Kana. And uh, can you confirm that you can see my screen? Yes, perfect. I can see your screen. Perfect. Okay, so uh, my name is Claudio Ramirez, as Gana mentioned, and uh, it's a pleasure to be with you this morning. We appreciate uh, British Columbia's invitation, um, which is very much aligned with um, the government of Canada's um, very deliberate intention to diversify its trade. So uh, I, I was almost late this morning uh, because uh, in Canada on Sunday, you uh, move the clock upwards and uh, you're now only two hours uh, difference with, with Colombia. And uh, I think that provides a good metaphor because uh, you're not only closer to Colombia now, uh, time-wise, uh, the goal of this presentation is to bring you physically closer to Colombia so that we can one day have the pleasure of hosting you here. 
Uh, I've been the head of the program here since 2018, and my presentation, like I said, will be sort of more high level um, and, and won't get too much into details because I think what we really want out of this is to pique your interest, uh, contact our team, and then we can give you more personalized uh, service depending on uh, your, your, your area of interest. Um, so I'm just going to flip here through the presentation. Um, and um, I think it's important, especially when we talk to, uh, to British Columbia, <laughs> that uh, we start with this. Um, if, if I had a penny every time I see Columbia written with a U instead of an O, uh, I would certainly uh, not need to be working anymore, retire very happily. Um, but it, it's a common mistake, um, and especially in Canada, of course. Um, so in terms of the trick commissioner service, let me start with that. I know that some of you participated in other um, webinars on Chile and Peru, so I won't spend too much time, but for those of you who are new to the trick commissioner service, suffice to say that we've been around for 125 years. We are a network of Canadian business development professionals. We help Canadian SMEs uh, be successful when they do business abroad. We are co-located with every major Canadian uh, and my Canadian embassy, high commission, consulate. So this is uh, on this map, uh, our locations worldwide. We have an office in, Bog in Bogota, obviously, but we also have offices across Canada. And uh, I've highlighted the one we have uh, in British Columbia. If you have not yet contacted one of our regional offices, uh, we have an office in Vancouver, but also one in Victoria, I would very much invite you to encourage you to contact them at the email that you see there. Um, our services essentially uh, threefold. We, we help you uh, penetrate into uh, markets with, with expert advice uh, about the culture, about the business opportunities, but also we provide funding. Um, and I'll get into that a little bit later uh, in order to de-risk your investment in doing business in emerging markets. Uh, that's funding, the, the one the more, more relevant to you all is called Can Export SMEs. Uh, it's essentially on a 50-50 basis. There's a cap and it's become extremely competitive over the years. Uh, and that information is on our website where you can really get a better sense of uh, when to apply, how to apply. And um, I would, again, encourage you to, to use and leverage those funds because, uh, like I said previously, it's going to provide your further financial incentive to uh, make that first jump into the Colombian market. So Colombia, uh, at a glance, and I will try not to repeat uh, what Ghana said previously, but essentially um, it's um, the third largest economy in South America after Brazil and Argentina. It is the second most populous uh, Spanish-speaking country uh, in Latin America after uh, Mexico, so a huge consumer market. And um, if I go into the location, which I think is key, um, there are two things to note on this particular slide. One is that Colombia is the entry point into South America. So uh, not surprisingly, its airport in Bogota is the largest cargo airport in all of South America. Uh, Colombia is one of the few countries, in fact, that enjoys direct flights uh, from Canada, uh, that's through Air Canada, but also more recently Avianca, the Colombian airline has launched direct flights between Bogota and Toronto. And like Canada, Colombia has access to both the Pacific Ocean and the Atlantic Ocean. And uh, that's key, especially with regard to uh, BC and the access to the Pacific Ocean. So it's very much a Pacific country. And you see on the left side of this slide that uh, it has a huge port on the Pacific coast called Buenaventura. That's where most of BC's exports would come through into the Colombian market and often then continue on uh, as a, as a jump, jump toward to other markets in South America. The other thing I want to mention about Colombia that's perhaps different from maybe Chile or Peru or other countries in South America, it's that it's a very multipolar country. So I've highlighted here on this slide the fact that, yes, there's a capital Bogota, but that's only about a fourth of the population, a third of the GDP. There are many other business centers like Medellin, Cali, Cartagena, uh, Bucaramanga, Barranquilla that you need to visit because there's a significant consumer market and some very important niches. Uh, for example, Cali is the biggest center for uh, agriculture. 
uh, Medellin for everything related to the fourth industrial revolution, innovation, startups is a really, really huge center. Um, and continue on to why Colombia. Um, essentially, there are two key arguments. One is its economic stability. If you look at this slide, Colombia has outperformed all of the other Latin American countries over the years in terms of GDP growth. We have a middle class that's growing. And also this is a country that never had a left-wing uh, president. It's always been a very market-friendly, very investment-friendly uh, environment. Never had a dictatorship either, has never defaulted on its debt. And unlike some countries uh, in the region, it hasn't been really volatile. It hasn't been prone to boost and boom and bust. Now, more uh, recent GDP production, pro, uh, projections, uh, as you can see on this slide, obviously 2020 was a rough year for Colombia. It, its GDP contracted over 7%. It was the largest uh, recession in, in the history of Colombia. It was also the largest recession in the history of Canada. But look at how Colombia has bounced back. So this, I mean, last year, uh, over 10% GDP growth. And more importantly, the forecast, and this is uh, from the IMF, and it was published in the Financial Times, Colombia is going to lead South America in terms of GDP growth, 2022, 2023. So it's important for SMEs in British Columbia who think about Colombia to take a long-term view. And really, I'm, I have every reason to be bullish on this market based on these projections. Another reason to love Colombia is the fact that it's one of the few countries in South America or Latin America to be an OECD member. In fact, it's one of the most recent OECD members. You can see on this slide that in Latin America and the Caribbean, only Mexico and Chile are OECD members. And why that matters is because to become an OECD member, you really have to pass uh, a very, very high bar in terms of uh, reforms. And being an OECD member means that Colombia is going to continue on the path of improving its infrastructure, improving education, improving health, uh, tackling corruption, uh, improving governance. So again, that is a reason why we continue to think that Colombia is really a, a very interesting market looking forward. Uh, the history of our bilateral relationship as well, you can see on this slide a picture of the prime minister with the president of Colombia, very like-minded. Uh, we had uninterrupted bilateral relations across different governments over the years. And more importantly, as Ghana mentioned, we have a free trade agreement, which turned 10 uh, last year, and it was a banner year for bilateral trade. Both countries had a record in terms of exports to one another. But again, I'll repeat myself, we really want more countries from British Columbia to start paying attention to this market and to come here. Um, I'll, I'll skip this slide because I want to jump to the next one. This is sort of the uh, evolution of our bilateral trade over the years. Uh, but what we've noticed after 10 years of the free trade agreement, our chief statistician and economist did a study. Uh, our goods exports to Colombia have increased by 35% in that 10 year span. Our services export to Colombia have increased by 125%. But look at even more. More impressive even is the Canadian investment in Colombia has increased by over 500%. And that's reflected in this slide. Canada is a leading foreign investor in Colombia. And why this matters to you if you just want to export to the country, not necessarily establish an office or a foothold, is that if Canadian pension funds and Canadian companies are here and they've invested here, it's because they trust this market, they have confidence in the market. And that should also stoke your interest in coming to Colombia. So now in terms of opportunities, and again, I said, I promise I would be high level in the interest of time. Agriculture, I mentioned how Colombia has a large population, 52 million people. Um, it, we provide two thirds of wheat to this country. We're also strong in lentils, fertilizers, uh, value added processed foods. McCain is here, uh, Sanimax uh, is here. So these are household names in Canada that are, have a presence here. Now we're going into genetics um, and, and um, bovine genetics and, and livestock genetics, which is sort of a, a new uh, frontier for us. Mining, uh, it's certainly not the size of what uh, we have in terms of investment in Peru or in Chile, but certainly, especially since Colombia signed a peace agreement in 2016, many areas in the country are opening up. There's lots of resources in nickel, in coal, but especially in gold, in copper, 
uh, we have many Canadian companies here. So if you service that industry uh, and some BC based, for example, B2 Gold is sitting on the largest gold deposit in Colombia, then you'll find a lot of business opportunities here. Uh, same thing with oil and gas. In fact, Colombia is one of the few countries in the region that is a significant oil and gas producer. And therefore, if you already are in this field, and then you'll find that we can connect you to a lot of different operators. Infrastructure, um, the new trend is mostly related to energy, but of course, being a big country, like I mentioned, a very mountainous country, road infrastructure, port infrastructure, airport infrastructure, government buildings. And here we have an advantage is that the Canadian Commercial Corporation works closely with us and it helps us sign government to government deals. And, and that really gives a competitive advantage to Canadian companies. So we'd be happy to talk more about that. Clean technology, uh, this is a country that in spite of being a big oil and gas producer is also a big producer in renewables. Uh, and therefore, if you are into wind, solar, hydro, uh, energy storage, energy transmission, you'll find uh, that this is a really, really big market. Defense uh, and security. Um, I mean, I mentioned the peace agreement, but uh, I won't lie to you. There are still rebel groups that are active in rural areas. And it's a country, therefore, that has a huge defense budget. Um, and in terms of urban security, uh, if you have software, light detectors, metal detectors, all these things uh, are, they're ripe for uh, this market. And finally, or almost finally, uh, ICT, right? Information Communication Technology, Software, Internet of Things, um, uh, Artificial Intelligence, Big Data. Uh, we have a lot of that uh, telecom operators here in Colombia as well. So um, this is definitely a, a market that, and a sector that is thriving for us. And education, before last, uh, we have so many now Colombians studying in Kenyan universities, not only in UBC, but we also have with MyTax in British Columbia, uh, a huge program to bring Ken uh, Colombian students to apply research in Canada. The numbers are staggering. So last year, we approached about uh, 8,000 Colombian students in Kenyan universities. And that's the second largest number in South America after Brazil. And we're about to surpass Brazil and even Mexico in terms of students to Canada. Finally, any company in the arts and creative industries, this is also an emerging market for Heritage Canada, uh, Mexico, Colombia, and Argentina, the top three markets uh, for this, uh, what we call here the orange economy. So performing arts, books, publishing, music. Uh, if you are in that field, uh, even you know delving into video games, uh, well, we'll welcome you to Colombia. And um, some events, because uh, I mentioned you, you, we provide funding to bring you to Colombia. Uh, these are some of the events that uh, are happening in this uh, country across the different sectors that I mentioned. We also invite and bring missions from Colombia uh, to Canada. Uh, so uh, if you're planning on attending trade shows in Canada, let us know. We'd like to match you and do some B2B with Colombian companies. Finally, just some tips uh, in terms of doing business here. And I won't really go into them too much because they're um, the same that you'll find across Latin America and the Caribbean, speaking the language, being patient, uh, not thinking that you can make a quick deal. Relationships are extremely important. And therefore, if you can have a local agent or a local representative uh, to do your bidding, to, to talk about your technology, about your products, that will certainly help. Um, and it's a demanding market. I mean, you have to be competitive in terms of pricing and quality. Finally, this is how to reach us uh, or reach myself more specifically as well. Uh, but the Trick Commissioner service uh, is on in, even Instagram, but we are on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter. So follow us, connect with us, and we'll be happy to help you. So we'll end my presentation right here and I will pass the baton to my, back to British Columbia. Thank you so much, Claudia. Thanks for, for this great presentation on uh, Columbia's market and why it should be on, on the top of mind of many VC companies. Um, in terms of its importance for, for the South um, America markets uh, and in terms of its size uh, in the South America, that's definitely an advantage for, for VC companies to consider. And also thanks for highlighting the opportunities in, in the sectors. They are they mentioned perfectly the uh, what VC companies can offer. And I hope that many companies that are on the line today uh, will have some questions. And uh, I encourage, I already see a few questions come in uh, in the chat. So I encourage you to submit uh, the questions either in the chat or in the Q&A. 
uh, box uh, of your uh, of your screen of your uh, Zoom panel, and we'll be taking them at the end of the presentation. So now I'm pleased to hand it over to Juliana from EDC for her presentation on Canada's Expert Credit Agency, and Juliana will walk you through what Expert Development Canada uh, is, what what uh, it's what support it provides to VC companies or Canadian companies like you, and hopefully through some success stories in the market and uh, well, using the EDC product. So Juliana, I'm going to share your presentation and I'm going to hand it over to you. Great, thank you, Ghana. Um, so yeah, after uh, this great overview from Ghana and Claudio, it will be a little bit easier because we're going to give you some information about us and how we can make the decision that you take to come to Colombia and make business with Colombia a reality. So before I continue, Juliana Perez, I am the MD and Regional Coordinator and I am here with Raul Duque. He's the Senior Account Manager and he's located in Vancouver. He's Colombian as well and we're here to talk about Expert Development Canada. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we are the export credit agency from Canada. So maybe for those ones who didn't join us in their previous Latin American webinars, I'm going to speak a little bit about what do we do, what are our products and what is our presence in Colombia. We're the export credit agency since 1944 and we have been dedicating to help Canadian companies of all sizes and sectors succeed in global markets. Next slide, please. So this is our purpose. Our purpose is to make Canada and the world better through trade. We help Canadian companies with our financial solutions, with our knowledge and with our network to develop trade in the international marketplace. So we help them being more competitive, but also to manage the risks that they will face in their journeys. Next slide, please. This is a map of our uh, international presence. We have 20 international representations right now, and we have one international corporate brand located in Singapore. From our Indian representation, we cover also Peru, Ecuador, Bolivia, the Caribbean, and Central America. Next slide, please. And this is a, an important slide that I decided to uh, include in my presentation because we believe that ESG is really powerful accelerator right now. We help Canadians to mitigate these governance environment and social risks that are facing right now. So we support these sustainable business opportunities. It doesn't matter in what stage of ESG you find yourself. So we finance these sustainable efforts so that you can have a better and a future uh, growth opportunity in trade. We also prioritize this ESG, not only for our customers, but also for our internal business and operations. And something important here is that we're working on building a more inclusive trade environment. So we're tailoring some of our products or our products to groups such as women in trade and also indigenous exporters. Next slide, please. Thank you. So now I'm going to invite my colleague Raul to help us explain a little bit and go through our solutions. Thank you, Juliana, and um, hi everyone. And so again, Raul Duque, based in, uh, in the Vancouver office of, uh, of EDC. Um, so I'm going to jump right, right now into actually what are EDC's solutions to help Canadian uh, exporters and investors. So we can bucket those solutions in four groups. And we can start with, with financing, which is a big uh, area of, of what EDC does. And it has different shape and forms depending on the size of the company and the, depending on the circumstances. So um, the, uh, one of the, I guess the first one that, that we can look at financing is a, is a guarantee program that works um, uh, with uh, the Canadian bank. So your can, the Canadian company's bank, we partner with your bank to help you get more access to working capital. So you, when you sign the contract in Colombia, or, um, and then you can have access to more financing, you can do the transaction. And so that's a, a big program that we, that we have. 
Um, then um, the financing also goes into direct financing when the company is more like mid-market and bigger companies that are looking at actually investing in the market or um, buying a company in the market, those type of things, EDC does that, they, we do direct financing for those uh, situations and, and then it can move up to more like corporate lending. So that's a more structured financing. Um, we do also have a program um, when you are dealing with capital equipment, um, those type of uh, more machinery, we partner with a, with a, with a company in Canada, uh, they, call, they are called Elevate. Uh, we work together so you can actually be more competitive and offer financing for your Colombian clients. So you have a package of financing, we can work on that as well. Um, we also have a program that is, um, and uh, Julian is more involved in that, but we actually finance Colombian, the big Colombian uh, corporations. And the main reason for that will be to open their supply chains and, and actually get them to buy Canadian. So. We, we, we will talk more about that, but, but that's also part of our financing program. Um, then uh, I can move to the second bucket uh, of solutions, that is the insurance program. Uh, it's pretty much credit insurance. Uh, so what that means is accounts receivable insurance whenever you have a transaction in Colombia and you want to be, uh, let's say you have a, a distributor and you want to give them terms, you want to give them up to 90, 180 days, so, so you, they can, there's more uh, flexibility in payment, but you can use our insurance uh, against non-payment of that specific uh, accounts receivable. So uh, it covers up to 90% of the transaction, um, and, and then you can uh, use it just for like a one specific deal, or you can use it for uh, all your portfolio. If you have multiple clients, you can use you use it for all. So it's very flexible, uh, and it's uh, it's it's the the biggest solution right now, I guess, in 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 in, in EDC for for because actually mitigate the risk of doing business. It also provides some financing uh, indirectly because your bank in Canada can margin the accounts receivable when it's insured by EDC. So, so that's a, another advantage of using the insurance, uh, um, the insurance uh, on, the, on, the, on those accounts. The third big uh, group of solutions is knowledge, and this is more of a free uh, service, and it's very complementary to what uh, the Trade Commissioner Service does. We actually, in a lot of instances, we actually uh, refer you to the Trade Commissioner when, when it's more in deep, uh, information, but anytime you have questions and and you want, we have a team that can package information and 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 can help you with specific issues on, on a specific in Colombia, for example. Uh, but mostly will be through the trade commissioner service. Uh, finally, uh, a big program, and this is uh, uh, Juliana is going to talk maybe about it, is the connections program, which is what I was referring to in terms of financing of big corporations in Colombia or across across the world. The world. So uh, we do, uh, as, as soon as we establish those connections with those companies, we actually make introductions. Uh, we, but we organize um, trade shows uh, or in the trade shows, we organize events to make the introductions. So that's a big program that we do uh, and is done through a, pro, uh, through a group at EDC that is called Global Trade. So they are very active um, and it's also a, a free service uh, where we match Canadian capabilities to what Colombia or the other countries in the world are looking for. So, so those are the, the big uh, buckets of solutions that EDC provides. And, and, um, and if there's any questions, you can maybe at the end um, um, put them in the chat and I will pass it on to Juliana. Thank you, Raul. That was very, very well explained. <laughs> now, next slide, please. Thank you. So EDC opened their office in Colombia, that one, yes, in February 2014. So I'm going to mention some of the highlights of our operation last year. Uh, our volume, the volume that we closed, it was 1 billion. It includes all our products last year. This is also more than 540 million just in financing. And we served 319 customers, out of which 272 were in the micro, small, and medium sectors, meaning were companies with one up to 500 employees. Most of our business volume was directed to the infrastructure segment, as you can see in the graph, but also within the customers that we served, more 
most sorry are in the manufacturing infra and resources uh, industries on the right side you can see our top two products uh, for colombia that they are financing on the one side and insurance on the other one the ones that uh, raul had explained and most of the customers the clients that we serve in the insurance side are in the agri-food sector next slide please Uh, yes, that one. Thank you. So this is uh, some relevant transactions that we closed on the financing side last year. So as you can see, um, hopefully it's not too tiny. Uh, most of these transactions are in the power and utilities sector. This is a really, really important sector right now. It's part of the uh, promotion of the economic recovery by the government. So there are a lot of incentives in public policies, regulatory and fiscal incentives in order to grow in these opportunities in the energy and power sectors. And as you can see, these are uh, also uh, transactions and financing that are helping uh, Canadian investors abroad. Uh, this is worth mentioning what Raul was saying about our uh, connection financing program. So this is also important because when a local company has a contract or has an agreement with a Canadian company, we can not only assist the Canadian side, but we also partner with the Colombian side. So we finance them. We do what Raul was explaining. So we do these trade connections. We are understanding first what are the needs of the Colombian company? What are the challenges that are facing? What are the things that they haven't been able to cover in the Colombian market with the vendors? So we go back to Canada and we analyze which are the Canadian companies that are a better fit for these Colombian buyers. We introduce them to them and we hopefully get some contract signs after all these interactions. And next slide, please. So this is also important to mention because we have realized that knowledge is a big important component of customers and something that we're working now. We're developing new knowledge products. And here is that when we work closely with the trade commissioner services, because we want to strengthen our market support for all the exporters. So we want to help you get a better understanding, not only of the market activities, but relationship and support you to grow your business. So we highly encourage here to create an EDC account on my edc.ca and also to follow us on social media. We are launching uh, guides all the time. We have etiquette guides for different regions, for Colombia as well. We have uh, different informational packs that you can find. And we also have our Trends in Trade that it's our latest uh, first season series of uh, Trends in Trade that is really good for you to begin understanding what is the market and if this is going to be something that you're considering uh, making business with. Also, uh, just to mention what Raul was saying, we have this team that could also help you understanding once you begin considering this as a market to understand you what are like the trade related question and information that you need in order to move along. And next slide, please. So this is our team and as Raul mentioned, all of us, we're here to assist you. So if you would like to expand more in any product or how can we support you to understand and get more tools in order to make business in Colombia, we're here to help. So here are our emails and please feel free to contact any of us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliana. Thanks for your uh, for this presentation of the EDC services, and thank you to Raúl as well for uh, joining the uh, the presentation and explaining how the how the services work. So I think it was a great overview of of what uh, BC companies can expect in the market, on what they can rely in terms of the services, and uh, how you can best support them once they go uh, once they go abroad. So I, I'm sure that we'll be getting a few questions. Uh, we already start getting some questions and we are actually moving into the Q&A session now. So I encourage you to send a few more questions uh, either in Q&A uh, section or in the chat box. 
uh, and uh, we we can start answering them right now. Um, I can see that a few questions have already been taken by uh, Claudio and by Raul. So there was one question about uh, oil and gas service sector and aerospace parts production in Colombia. Um, I think David, uh, Claudio has already answered your question, but in case you want to, you have more questions to, to follow up with, please, please do so either in the chat or in the Q&A uh, section. I can see there was already one question from uh, to EDC from Eric uh, regarding the closing the insurance uh, of the solution. Okay, uh, this has been taken on as well. Um, okay, here is one question from Eric uh, again. Uh, I believe to EDC, so to Juliana or to Raúl. Um, whether anyone can give an idea of cost for, for an insurance product. And I, I appreciate that it might be a specific question. Um, it might need some, some begin some research, but uh, Juliana or uh, anyone? I can, I, can take, I can take that one. Um, so the, uh, the insurance, yes, as you mentioned, is really depends on the uh, specific type of product. Uh, so for example, if it is um, a type of commodity, um, lumber, for example, will be cheaper than a more customized product. The market also obviously make a big difference. Um, but in general, the pricing range is around uh, between 50 basis points to 1% of the amount that you want to insure. And, uh, and it, that would be, that would cover, uh, let's say, um, if you want to cover for uh, uh, like a one-off, so it would be, let's say 90 days. Um, for that specific amount, around, I would say, 50 basis points to one percent of the of the insure or the amount that you want to insure. Mm -hmm. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I hope so. I hope it it provides a bit okay. of um. Okay. Let's check. Okay. Yeah, Eric. Eric says that yes for him, but. Yes, in case uh, Eric and uh, everyone else, in case you want to follow up with, uh, with the panelists, you have the contact details and we'll be providing them in the follow-up emails as well. And Claudio has already posted one, um, an email here to follow up uh, in the chat as well. So if anyone wants to follow up with him and with his team, you can also go and check the email in the chat. Um, I think we see one more question from, uh, beer producer in BC. So a question on the craft beer. Is the craft beer popular in Colombia and are there any imported craft beers from, from Canada? So in, ca in case Claudio, if you could, if you know, or if you could point the, our company in the yeah. right direction. So, so definitely there's, uh, I would say, even more of a beer culture than a wine culture uh, on, on, in Colombia uh, compared to, say, Chile or Argentina, which are big wine producers, as you know. Uh, they are both local. Uh, there are there's breweries as well as um, a lot of imported ones. Uh, there is an issue with uh, some tariffs and taxes applying to alcoholic beverages. And the same way that Canada has uh, provinces, Colombia has departments. And therefore, depending on where you ship them, um, those uh, taxes may, may vary. So um, the best thing I can recommend is that you uh, write to us at the email that I shared, and we can have a more fulsome conversation about that. But uh, yes, definitely a big consumer market for, for craft beer. Thank you, Claudia. It's, uh, it's reassuring for, uh, for this BC company, I believe, and for, for many others, too. Um, Okay, I think there are more questions. Let me check the Q and A box. Okay. Um, okay, I think we have uh, we have had a few questions coming uh, during the registration uh, stage. So I might just take those too, and I encourage others to think about other questions that you might still have on the top of your mind and. Uh, um, just drop them either in the chat or in the Q and A box. But uh, I'll go with the with the few questions that we have. Um, so there was one question from the uh, life sciences sector, and I think it would go to Claudio probably too. So there was 
a company asking uh, they want to expand uh, in the in the sector so they are from li life sciences sector but uh, they acknowledge that most distributors need to register their product uh, the same way that in Europe for example they need the uh, CE marking uh, for in vitro diagnostics um, and eventually they would need a similar to go through the similar process in Colombia markets as well. Um, are you able to comment on the registration of uh, such in vitro diagnostics uh, or is it something that you need to to check and with uh, with your colleagues on? So the, the details of the registration, of course, uh, we need to, to double check, but I can say with certainty that um, as mentioned in the question, there is a process here similar to what we have in Canada with Health Canada or the FDA in the United States. Uh, the agency responsible for that in Colombia would be in BIMA. Um, now that is obviously not insurmountable. Um, there is a vibrant life science industry here in Colombia. Uh, we have in fact a Canadian uh, clinical trial uh, company we also have a biotech company that recently did a joint venture with the local company to develop RNA vaccines for different therapies, including COVID. Um, and, um, and in terms of medical devices, I think if these are manufactured in Canada, then uh, absolutely. Um, I, we, we think, that, again, given the large population and the fact that there's rising demand, uh, not only from uh, upper middle class uh, for, for these type of individual diagnostic solutions, uh, but also from the growing middle class, right? Um, that, that I can see that Colombia would be a good market to test uh, for, for this company. So again, uh, we, we never really go into the particulars because that requires a, a more of a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but in broad brush, um, the, the, the answer would be yes, there's this potential and uh, there's a registration process, but very well worth it. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Claudio. Thanks for this comprehensive answer. I think we have one more question from uh, from the current uh, attendees. So uh, there is a company, a local seafood exporter of Hake, Pacific Whitein, and they are in search of new markets. Uh, Claudio, do you think there are opportunities for this type of product in Colombia for the for the BC Hake? So sorry, I missed that. The product is a is a cake. Did I hear that well? Hake. So the uh, the variety of fish. Take. Oh, I see. Uh, well, again, uh, yes. Um, and this can be done mostly through uh, big retailers, right? This, so, which provide a really good distribution channel uh, here in, in Colombia. Um, and uh, we know, you know, the vast majority of them. Um, and, and in terms of getting to the retail side of things, uh, that would be the introductions that we would make uh, for you. There are a couple of events in Canada for, for uh, the agri-food and, 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 and fish industry, uh, such as Seal, there's, which alternates between Toronto and, and Montreal. If there is something in BC in terms of big trade fair that we can lure these buyers to, uh, let us know. I don't have it currently on my radar, but it's always good intel to have. Otherwise, um, you know, we welcome you to come to Colombia and we can introduce you one-on-one -on -one, uh, to these uh, big grocery chains. Uh, there are about three or four in Colombia that have a presence across the country, and including one that specializes in, in, seafood, in fish and seafood called, called Ipermar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Claudia. Uh, I think there was one company that asks for um, clarification about the email address uh, of Bogota Office uh, of Trade Commissioner Service. Um, yeah, so that, that is the correct email that is in the in the chat. So. Um, yeah, it doesn't miss any any letter. Okay, uh, so I think we have one one more question that we have received uh, during the registration process and. Eventually, it might go either to Juliana or to Raul. So this this is a question from um, a currently exporting company in in manufacturing. So uh, they consider that made in in Canada um, products are quite expensive for buyers in developing countries located in South America, and um, those buyers cannot easily access financial options to buy their equipment. And 
the company cannot offer credit terms to foreign buy buyers easily either. So is there any anything in terms of EDC products that can help them find a solution, something that can help them facilitate um, the transactions? I understand it's quite high level uh, as, a, as a question. Uh, and they would probably require one-on-one -on -one follow up, but um, and they are a manufacturing company. I don't have any any more details on them. But uh, yes, essentially, product made in Canada is is expensive for the buyers, and the buyers they don't have easy financial options to to buy their equipment. So, is there anything that EDC offers uh, to Canadian companies or to South American companies that can help? them with the with the credit terms i can i can take uh, this one so it's raul um so yeah we do have um, a solution where we partner with a with a company that um that uh, is specialized in latin america for for this type of financing uh the caveat it has to be capital equipment it has to be equipment that they can take a kind of a lean on and um, and then they can put together a package for financing, term financing up to up to five years. Uh, so that obviously is a, is, a, is an incentive because the, the the rates are cheaper than than the the local market um, in a sense. Um, um, and and then EDC backstop the transaction. That's through uh, one of our programs, the guarantee programs. But in, in if, if interested, we can make the introduction to to the representatives from Elevate. They are the ones, kind of the the, the ones who actually uh, up front. They, they are the front for the for the solution. So they 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 can't, you will be also the person that is interested will get in touch with them, and then we can start the process um, with Elevate. Um, so that is, is, there is a solution. Um, and um, it obviously depends on how strong is as well the client in, in Colombia. Uh, if it's not, uh, obviously, uh, her, their financials is not, they are not strong enough, it would be tough as well to put it together, but um, the solution exists for that. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Raul. So I understand that you, you will work with the Canadian company, but you also need to know the, the details of the transaction of their partner too. Exactly. We, we will need to get in touch with their client, uh, with their potential buyer, um, and get their financial statements, like a normal financing transaction uh, that will happen, let's say, in Canada. But we will need their financials, uh, do a review, and, and we will figure it out if, if, if it's um, possible to make the, the loan to the company directly. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. And I see we have um, some clarifications about the, uh, the email address of uh, Bogota Office of Trend, uh, Trade Commissioner Service. So please check the, the correct address that Claudio has just sent a few minutes ago. There was one, one letter missing indeed. It was not O, it was uh, another letter. But uh, yeah, please go back and check in the chat. Uh, and anyways, you will receive the, uh, the emails, the, uh, the email address and the contact details of all the panelists in the follow-up email. So there is one more question. Um, again, one more question about beer, but it is also connected to the logistics. So I'll, let me just read it out uh, loud uh, here in case it is of interest to other companies shipping goods as well. Uh, so what would be the ocean freight, um, the, the time of, um, of the ocean uh, maritime route from Vancouver to Colombia in case Claudio or Juliana or anyone knows. I assume it is under 10 days, but you might have more. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll, we'll definitely have to check. We'll definitely have to check because I know that there are certainly bottlenecks currently in global supply chains and in uh, ocean freight transportation. Um, but uh, um, so we'll, we'll try to get that answer. And uh, again, maybe it's easier if we do it one on one. But uh, again, it, it would from from whether, whether whether it's Prince Rupert or Vancouver Port uh, to Buenaventura, um, it's it's a direct line through along the Pacific, right? So the good thing is that you don't have to go through the the Panama Canal uh, in order to be able to ship uh, to, to Colombia. Hmm. Great, thank you, Claudia. 
And I think we have one more question to, to EDC. So there is a company, um, so the last year they um, had an issue with, um, with, the uh, with trying to get a letter of credit to support a contract with the Colombian Air Force. So while on the process of getting the insurance, um, there were protests in Colombia that happened. And uh, so the EDC did not provide the, the bond at that time. Uh, so there were some uh, issues during, uh, due to the human rights problems during the manifestations. And uh, the question is, is if this is still an issue for, for this year. Um, so I, I see that the, the person who asked the question is Christian. Um, Christian, I will have to double check that. Um, that's true that obviously um, last year there were some um, issues uh, with some violence uh, in the streets. So I will have to find out because that's always, always moving. Uh, our our uh, ESG group um, always are checking what's happening, the pulse of the market, what is going on. And at that time, it was there were questions about the I guess what happened. I will have I will have to confirm with the with the group with the bonding group um, just to see what is their uh, position uh, in order to support those going forward. Especially because I think it was for the Colombian Air Force, so I, I have to check, and we will get back to you on that as well, Juliana. As well, we will both get back to you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Raul. Yeah, and we'll be sharing the um, the questions with the with the panelists as well, so that you can follow up with the uh, with the companies directly. And we encourage also if you have other questions that something comes up uh, after this webinar, uh, we encourage you to to get in touch either with myself or you can get in touch with the uh, with panelists uh, directly too. Okay. So um, I don't see any more questions coming from the attendees at this stage. So we might as well give you back some time to your day. And uh, yeah, I think we can uh, start wrapping up this session unless there are any, any other questions that are coming. So seeing no more questions. I just wanted to thank all the all the panelists and uh, everyone for for attending the today's webinar, uh, doing business in Colombia and Colombia free trade agreement and business opportunities for for BC companies. And uh, thank you, Claudio, for uh, specifying the difference between Colombia and Colombia. I hope that it is um, it, it is very timely and uh, it is on the top of, of mind of many companies um, diversifying the the markets and uh, looking into some opportunities in uh, markets that are close to home, close to British Columbia, but still not as explored as others. So if there are any questions, please contact us at the contact details that uh, you will find in a follow-up email. And the follow-up email will also have uh, a link uh, to, to view a recording of this webinar, uh, PDF files of the presentations and a survey that we would appreciate if you could complete and provide provide your feedback on the session. And uh, we are looking forward to seeing you in our future sessions. And uh, on behalf of BC government and uh, all our speakers, I wanted to thank you for joining us today and uh, to wish you a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. Looking forward to working with you all. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Have a good day, everyone.